there, Simon from simonwoods.com here. Boldly going where I've not been before in these videos. I've done two wines in a video. I've done three wines. I've done, f I'm trying to get seven in today, so I'd better shut up. Old Beaujolais, some of them from the very, very promising 2000 and um, nine vintage, which is the best Beaujolais vintage for a long time. Although 2005 was pretty good and 2003 wasn't bad either. First two, Beaujolais Village, Chateau de la Terrière, 2008. Vieille Vigne. I don't know how Vieille the Vigne are, but let's see if there's some old vine concentration here. Mm, it smells quite simple, slightly bubblegummy. It doesn't smell like there's a huge depth of flavour, but let's give it a whirl. He said burping, sorry. Not so sure about that one. Feels on the slightly thin, slightly scrawny side. Um, not a great advert for the region. Next Beaujolais Village, 2007. Interesting, 2007, they put a plastic cork in. Um, and because uh, for me, plastic corks are the worst of the worst. Anyway, Domaine de Nugue, 2007. Mm, maybe a bit more fruit here. But it smell again, it doesn't smell like it's going to be uh, have a, a real quite crunchy depth. It's, it's almost like lost up fruity freshness of youth. And uh, there's not been not enough power there to carry it through in its um, in its dotage. It's okay, a bit more, maybe a bit more plum plumminess there. But um, uh, mm. the next two I've got, actually no, not the next two. Uh, the next three I've got are all flurry. Interestingly, they're from um, Négociant. Um, this one's from Chanson. Uh, the next two are from Henriot. Uh, I'll get onto those in a moment. But first, the Chanson one. Um, De Maison Chanson, their 2007 Fleury. Is it going to be nice floral wine? I'll give it a whirl. Well, this it's got a slightly um, cooked, plummy, bit of tomato uh, and uh, yeah, cooked red fruit edge here. Again, maybe it's it's sort of a halfway house. It doesn't it seem to be on that fresh fruity side yet. That maybe there's not enough concentration to sustain it in its maturity. Actually, it's okay. Um, quite nice, actually. Um, uh, the, the, the structure there, uh, and there is just about enough fruit. It's not going anywhere. I'd be if I had bottles of that, I'd be drinking it up pretty quickly. Um, but it has got this slightly, this nice raspberry edge uh, to the finish. The next two also flurry uh, from uh, Henrio. Henrio is a champagne house that uh, bought Bouchard Perifis in Burgundy. I can't remember how long ago now, 15 years, something like that. And uh, they've also, they've got this domain, uh, Villa Ponciago. Our centuries old history began in AD 949, blah, 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 blah. I'll put the website up on the, uh, on, 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 yeah, on my website, then you can have a, a look at it. Um, I think they've got like four separate parcels of vineyard in, in different bits of flurry. This is one called La Reserve. I imagine this is like bits of... Um, Maybe what didn't go into the, the ones that have got a single vineyard name in. And immediately I look at it and uh, it's a much more vibrant, uh, healthy, glowing colour. It looks like it's going to have, um, yeah, more bounce, more vif. Yeah, and it has. It's got this um, cherries, raspberries, it's got this nice earthy, it feels like it's going to be crunchy. And um, it feels like it's going to be much fuller bodied than the Chanson. And Fleury is one of the, I suppose, medium weight of what they call the crew villages. There are ten, uh, ten pl places in Beaujolais that are entitled to uh, slap the village name on rather than put Beaujolais or Beaujolais Village on. Uh, and Fleury is probably one of the medium weight ones here. Uh, but this this feels like it's got quite a bit of power to it. Yeah, that's really lively, full, fleshy, juicy, sappy style of wine. And it feels like it's got structure, a bit of tannin, but acidity as well. But this bright, bouncy, hello, come and get me, juicy, crunchy fruit. With some, uh, but not never overripe. It's got this little slightly leafy edge on the finish, which is really nice. Good wine. Next, um, it's um, one of their single vineyards, Les Hautes de, du Pi, P-Y. This feels dumber. You smell, you stick your nose in here and it feels, um, it's weird, it feels both richer and dumber. 
I know it sounds like it's an MP, I know, but um, it feels that um, there's going to be more concentration, but it's not coming out to play at the moment. It, um, if this one is the wine, it, and this one is really quite nice, and uh, uh, it's got life ahead of it, two years ahead of it, I'd say, at least this, uh, this uh, reserve. But here, it feels like uh, it needs about, oh, golly, another six months or so to come into its own, and then we'll have quite a long future ahead of it. Ooh, it smells. It's got a really lovely fragrance, like violets and uh, uh, and and this raspberry uh, and this this black cherry, but this this um, yeah earthy earthy notes as well. Yeah, there's a really lovely, lush, juicy richness there. It almost feels like if someone had said to you that that was um, from somewhere that was considerably warmer than Beaujolais. It's almost got the feel of Languedoc Beaujolais. There's this warm spice to it. Full-bodied for Beaujolais. I mean, Beaujolais is, is, is for me a really nice light to medium-bodied wine, but this is almost, it, it's certainly medium plus. And um, yeah, it, feel, it feels like it's got quite a bit of um, strength, power, structure, really promising, young, tasty, voluptuous wine. Whoa. And fragrant with it. Yeah, not just power. There's uh, brain in with the brawn. Next one, um, still in 2009, Morgon, which is one of the sturdiest of the, um, of the crew, and uh, Chateau du Pizé. Yeah, this has still got that same uh, richness mixed with bounce and freshness. It's got, um, yeah, it's some of that earthiness as well. It Maybe it's not as fine and floral as the... Um, as these two flurries, but it feels like it's got uh, it's got it's got maybe a bit more iron-hearted uh, edge to it. Yes, a fascinating contrast between those two. The flurry is um, the lighter. I mean, this is this is quite really quite full-bodied wine. It's the lighter style, but it's the more fragrant. It's the more complex, and I think it's also the more expensive. But um, I think this one's only about nine quid, and I think for nine quid, that's uh, a pretty decent wine but I do prefer the two flurries. Okay, the last one. And we are on Morgan Côte du Pie here. With one of those lovely wax seals which annoy the pants off anyone trying to open them. Please winemakers, why do you put them on? You just, you just end up with bits of wax all over the kitchen. Anyway, uh, Jean Foyard's um, Morgan 2007 Côte du Pie. Mmm. Now, it's interesting when Beaujolais ages, um, sometimes it gets to a stage beyond a certain age at which you think, this is Burgundy, this is proper red Burgundy, Cote de Nuit Burgundy. Um, and uh, this has got some of that uh, really lovely truffly uh, style that, that, that the wines develop. Mm. It smell, it's got this sort of naughty edge to a bit wild, a bit feral, rustic, but... Um, but yeah, no, sexy, naughty, rustic, gypsy, Seth Stark had a wine. Ah. Um, I said it reminded me of Burgundy. It almost reminds me of a cross between Burgundy and uh, Southern Rhone. Because there's this wild, spicy meatiness uh, that I think of as being Rhone. But maybe with this um, Burgundy-style fruit, this cooked strawberries, this edge of cherries, and... Um, it's, it, I'm surprised at how, how evolved it is for 2007. It feels, um, it, it, it feels like it's, it's, it's gentle and confident now. It doesn't feel like there's any edges to be resolved, but it still feels powerful and uh, as if it's going to go on and on and on and on. So I'll go on and on. Yeah. Intriguing stuff. And um, a huge sea change at this end from this end. I mean, I found the... The first two Beaujolais Village are a bit bland, a bit boring, but um, as soon as you kicked in with these um, these last four, the two flurries from uh, from Henriot, the Pizé, well, and the two Morgons, uh, then Beaujolais, yeah, got its boots on. So um, go out there, fill your boots with 09 Beaujolais uh, before all the prices go up, and see you soon.